biodiversity uh, by major uh, conservation institutions such as Conservation International and WWF uh, based on species richness, endemism, and also the threatened status by anthropogenic activities uh, such as excessive logging and uh, unsustainable farming practices. Uh, for the Montan landscape, uh, like in the Himalayas of Nepal, where the forest patches are already um, highly modified and um, limited to higher elevations. Understanding how plants uh, are just resources are distributed and utilized by local people uh, is critical for, uh, from the conservation point of view. Uh, this is a uh, April image uh, of 2011 image satellite image of a monastic conservation area, and this green uh, here represents the vegetation, not necessarily, necessarily the forest, but shrubs and herbs and grasses and such. And these uh, areas are decreasing yearly, and you can see that uh, they are um, very patchily distributed and are limited mostly to higher elevations. Monastic conservation area is in Nepal, and it's situated in the central part of Nepal. It was established in 1998 as a conservation uh, area. It borders the Tibetan uh, region in the northern part. Uh, it constitutes um, about four different ethnic communities. Uh, but for this presentation, I'll only talk about uh, the growing ethnic communities who live around this uh, southernmost boundary of the conservation area. The gurus are uh, influenced both by Tibetan Buddhist and Hindu uh, cultural practices and, and lifestyle. The purpose of this study is to compile and integrate ecological and, and ethnobotanical knowledge about forest patches and woody plants accessible and utilized by rural different communities. And by accessible, I mean um, how far the distance between the, for, uh, the village and the forest. Since this area is um, very remote and very little um, ethnobotanical and botanical work has been, forest survey has been done there, I ask a very basic question. What is the total diversity of plant resources? And how are these resources distributed across the study reason? Um, overall, to see how the ecological diversity compares to that of the ethnobotanical diversity there. Uh, this was done uh, through participatory mapping um, and uh, with uh, both uh, men and women of the rural communities. The participatory mapping, mapping was done not only to see uh, how local people conceive their landscape, but also to understand where uh, these forest patches are and which ones of these are they mostly used. Uh, some of the mappings were done uh, simply using the uh, paper and pencil, but uh, some of that was also uh, Used using the, um, the satellite images. And those satellite images had uh, added uh, points, GPS points, that were known to these people. And from that, they used it as a reference point to delineate the, their home territory, their um, culturally important landscape, as well as uh, the forest patches that are important for them. Based on these maps, then I established uh, 108 ecological uh, plots and various forest patches, and uh, in um, the trees were recorded in 20 by 10 meter square plots uh, that had 10 centimeter uh, that had greater than 10 centimeter or equal to 10 centimeter DBH or diameter at breast height, and then uh, these shrubs and these tree saplings were um, recorded in 10 by 5 meter square plots uh, that were nested in that 20 by 10 meter square plot. The uh, ethnobotanical information uh, of the plants that were recorded in the plots were then uh, recorded on the site uh, by interviews uh, with informants. And the further uh, ethnobotanical data was recorded via free listing interviews and, and various observations. Uh, I say preliminary result because I have just, I mean, a very first step of analyzing my data. But what I have so far shows that uh, uh, this is only an example of one uh, little map uh, that the females of one of the villages made. Uh, shows that uh, rural people have extensive knowledge of the landscape. 
and uh, especially of uh, resource areas um, that are mostly situated in, in, in the higher elevation above their villages. Uh, if you sort of um, simplify that landscape map, you can see that uh, their villages are mostly surrounded by the uh, agricultural fields and then surrounded by the um, grasslands that were once forested and then the this is the area they call Nakh, or forest patches, from where they get most of their resources from. And it is mostly average of two to three hours to get to these places to get, get the resources. Uh, so uh, there are 154 uh, total woody plant species, uh, represented by 76 families and 87 genera. 79 were trees, and 41 were species uh, shrubs, and 13 were vines or climbers, and uh, 21 were um, species that could be shrubs or, or trees. But this, mind you, this is only woody plants, not herbs and grasses. If you look at the ethnobotanical diversity and ecological diversity together, uh, the composition of the, those forest patches and uses of plants there, uh, it's very interesting because you can see that what what is there in the ecological setting is also what is in the minds of people. They, the, the uses of them. So um, that's, uh, you know, I do not know how significant is the plant resource due to the genetics patterns to the uh, local plant diversity is, but it needs more analysis, but uh, at least it provides uh, insight to uh, the human resource uh, uh, relations. Uh, if you look at the categorical uses of plants, um, the Philippines plants are mostly used for the uh, technology using uh, that had crafts and tools, and such as this one where the man is making uh, a plow. And then uh, the second category was the few wood. So this one is almonds species, and then this one is the pine species here. And then the uh, the order, I'm sorry, the food and the uh, what was that? Yes, the food and the construction I had the other percentages that were higher. That's a species of a Vitacea used as a, as a fruit. Um, this, uh, I know it's very difficult to see here, but uh, this only shows uh, how uh, uh, the species were uh, distributed in the, in the landscape, in the forest patches, based on the frequency, density, and their relative dominance. So this is just the important static calculation. And these, these are the five species that had the highest importance values. And these are mostly used for fodder uh, and uh, field work. But the important thing to remember is that none of these uh, uh, species, at least not in, in they do not come in the uh, five highest uh, plant, uh, ranked plants that are mostly used or considered useful uh, to the people of that area, except for the rhododendron. And this is the cultural value uh, calculation where you can see that none of the species in that were also, uh, that had higher uh, IV in the uh, ecological setting is present here except for rhododendron. And uh, the, the cultural value is calculated using Reyes and Garcia's paper of 2006 that was published in Economic Botany. Um, the, these uh, these uh, five highly ranked plants were um, ranked based on 73 participants, and then the, the uh, values were calculated. These are mostly used for fuel woods, and two of them, them this Larix and Aves, are also used for the um, construction. They are most prized species for construction. So that's the Psychobalanopsis glauca. That's Pinus wallachina. They use it for raised resin and a fire. Um, and then that's uh, Larix Himalaika, uh, Avis spectabilis, uh, and uh, that's the Cornus capitata, used mostly for fuel wood. This, uh, I said this is very preliminary, so I have much more work to do on this, but this is just to show that the diversity uh, of the species that uh, are mostly used, a number of uses, a number of uh, uh, useful plants uh, seems to increase with elevation. And that elevation seems to be, oops, that elevation seems to be between 22 to 2,800 meters. So based on this preliminary examination, uh, it can be concluded that uh, 
there is a significant contribution of Wudikian resources to the uh, room livelihoods. And uh, the mountain forests, uh, the forest patches here are um, highly modified and secondary in nature, but they are rich in species. And uh, culturally important species that were cultivated both using the ivy and uh, cultural value uh, can become a base for conservation discussion and its application by enrichment and sustainable use, especially for rural communities uh, who do not involve themselves in, in enriching or planting. Uh, they may plant fruit trees that are distributed to them that may not necess necessarily be needed, or they may use stems to fence around their home, but uh, that's not exactly planting. So um, the other thing from this we can conclude is that uh, the resource patches between 22 to 2800 meter uh, seems to be an interesting uh, zone. So maybe this can be used as a guide to site-specific strategies for conservation, if needed. So I am indebted to the rural communities, the Vishnu Guru, who was my uh, resource uh, assistant and field assistant uh, in NCA, and Dr. Medley and Dr. Ashka, and um, NSF, um, SEDs, Richard at the Selfies Award, and uh, Botany in Action by Phipps, also Mayan University, Chisholm University in Nepal, and the um, Nature for uh, Nature Conservation, NTNC, Kathmandu Nepal, which overlooks the conservation um, of the mass conservation area. catch it before, but did you have prior informed consent for all of your interviews? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. We had to do IRB at school and then, okay. and, and yeah. Uh, it was not written. Uh, it was oral. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <clears throat> this species uh, that has high cultural values, Yes. are they widely distributed within the country also? Uh, or more uh, specific and Oh, of, of this area, yes. yeah, widely distributed um, in, in the in the area. Um, sir, over here, Dr. Josie is there. He, he may know more. I know. I'm sure that the Corca species and the Cyclobella anopsis they are found also in the more eastern part of Nepal. Yeah, my thought is that uh, the result of this study will be very useful, obviously. <laughs> yes. To expand, in and uh, certainly that depends on the habitat yes. conditions. Yes. Yeah, I think this species may all go from 1,500 to 3,000 meters, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, well, the psychobalanopsis, I think it's only up to 2,000. Uh, the finest species can maybe meet around 22, 2,000 in this area. Yeah. It has both the, this area is very interesting because uh, it is the center point for yeah. meeting the flora of both eastern and the western mm -hmm. Himalayas. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's in the yeah. center yeah. Himalaya. Yeah. Yeah. So it has, it has species point. from everywhere. Yes. Okay. That's right. So it's difficult to really say where it is native to. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. This was great. And uh, the species that are really important to people, I wonder if it came out in your interviews, there's an active interaction and management yes. of, of those trees or other words. Again, sorry. I, I'm just I'm wondering if uh, the species that come out is very important. If people are mentioning that they might be actively managing all oh, those, I did. Uh, that was that's why I said that they do not involve in uh, in planting any of this because I did ask question. Uh, do you do you do you plant this? If you have to go two to three hours average to yeah. get to the uh, field wood and, and and all the resources, why why don't you plant? And they said we we don't really plant. I mean, you know, and then you can use whatever. For pure wood, they're using everything. Yeah. Almost everything I reported in the plots were uh, used for at least one purpose, and that one purpose mostly is for pure wood. Mm -hmm. and no, that is one thing. But but I also have another part of my research where I <coughs> ask about the perception of these, uh, the abundance of these species in the area. And uh, the, the, in the list, two of them, the, the construction, the species that were used for construction, like abies and then the larynx, they, it's found in higher elevations, a bit inaccessible to them. The ones that were accessible are already gone. Mm. So, but but they do have the perception that 
that it's uh, some of them is you know this the numbers are going down. So in some places in the world, the uh, approach to managing these forests has been to introduce a different way for the people to cook. Yeah. We have these little mini stoves being introduced in many areas. Yeah. I think that would impact the loss of species that some would be able to provide an entirely different way for cooking. Yes. And when they move over from their wood-based approach, which I suspect they would. They would. If you ask them what do you need here the most, they would say uh, alternative to fuel wood. And, and in other parts of Nepal where they, there have been active management uh, conservation areas, they have, they have that. They use, but they use, you know, kerosene, and that's another whole, yeah. We'll get there eventually. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Awesome. Um, very excellent presentation and documentation. Thank you. You have so done. So thanks for that. And my observation, uh, I want to explain, because you have not mentioned any habitat. Yes, sir. Habitat, the categories of habitat and characteristic of habitat is very important yes, sir. for the development of strategies. Because you have mentioned there mm -hmm. in your objective also, mm -hmm. you are going to mention some management strategies mm -hmm. for future yeah. conservation mm -hmm. of resource and people needs, how you will fulfill the needs of the gurus mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. That point is very important. So that interrelation between plant and people needs and culture and social, yes, their relation, you have to develop, you have to show it. Maybe you will do after the, this is the preliminary, the yes, data yes. Right. Yes. So when you will develop the problems, threats and problems, yes. and after that, the conclusion. That point is very important. You have to base on the threat and ecological nature of that area, you know. Because mountain is very fragile and very sensitive. Once you disturb, it is very long time to take the, again, same type, you know, yes. to develop. Yes. So this point, you have to uh, give priority in the future. Okay, I yes, yes. I, I was going to talk about the vegetation types, yeah. and I was uh, you know, if you look at the uh, vegetation map of that area, it's there is no real vegetation map. You know, that. Yeah, uh, there's only potential. And if you look at that, it only shows that no. these areas that I was, I was studying, it only falls on oak forest and the cheer pine forest, no, one right. of the pine species. But that's not true. If you go into the field, yeah. you know that there are more than four more, or yeah. five different kinds of vegetation. That was still very high. Yeah, yes, very yes, and I have to do the. No. Um, analysis. I didn't show it here because I'm just in the in that process. But thank you so much. Anyway, yes. Anyway, you have done good. Right. <laughs> thank you. And so for the other thing, I think people would find interesting, and how much pressure is on the resource from outside the country, Tibet, and so forth. Uh, very. Uh, this area is so close to Tibet that, uh, mm -hmm. and Tibet being now being built so much by Chinese uh, government. Uh, most of our uh, timbers, especially from these ABs and Larics, um, it is uh, is going to Tibet, and you can see herds of uh, you know the groups of yaks and mules being uh, transporting boards and, and timbers to, to Tibet. Very, very. That's one. Uh, the other is the obviously the medicinal plants. And I have not even gone to these areas, the Alpine region. I haven't even, even been there, and you know that uh, it's it's happening there. You see it on the road. Yes. So is um, harvesting extraction allowed in Manasi? Yes. 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 Actually, people people manage it. Um, you know, there are um, men's group and women's uh, women's group. They 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 have uh, all the rights to do it, but uh, the conservation uh, institute just overlooks it. But even then, you know that. The, po the poaching of the timbers and, and medicinal plants are ongoing because it's just so remote and then <coughs> there is no check, checks and balance and places where you have to go and, uh, and you know, the entry ports, uh, there is not very um, strict. Uh, okay. Great. Well, great job. Thank you.